Okay, hello everybody. We're uh, getting used to this. Well, Jamie is anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is great, isn't it? Um, it's starting to work out well for us, and uh, praise the Lord for that. So it's a uh, Wednesday night, and uh, yeah, it's been a few weeks now since we've been meeting like this. But uh, praise the Lord. Okey doke. Uh, if you go to Philippians chapter three, I'm going to start there. And um, second time lucky. Uh, the name of this talk is Prevention is Better Than Cure. And I think everybody has heard that saying. Um, yeah, it's a fairly common saying, isn't it? Prevention is better than cure. Um, you've, there's one word that's going to come up a lot tonight, and that's the word keep. Yeah, that's going to be the buzzword of this talk is keep. But uh, prevention is better than cure. Uh, some of the meanings for that, uh, one meaning is it's easier to stop something happening in the first place than to, than to repair the damage after it has happened. Uh, prevent the problem than solve the problem after it has happened. And this is some of the, I suppose, what people would say, prevent, what prevention is better than cure means. We've also heard the saying, a stitch in time saves nine. So if you had a hole in your garment, we use the Bible word there. You might normally say jumper or jeans. Um, and if you, as soon as the hole uh, appears, if you put a little stitch in it, um, by doing that straight away, you're going to save yourself having to maybe put nine stitches in it at a later stage. Um, I think it was uh, Abraham Lincoln, one of those American presidents, he said, an ounce of prevention is better than a lump of cure. And, um, and this, is, this is very much uh, a fact, I suppose. It wouldn't be too hard to prove that. Um, another word that I suppose that pops up when you look at prevention is better than cure is the word avoidable. Avoidable. And um, we're living in a time uh, where I suppose with everything that's happening, um, we've been asked to do a lot of things by our government and other people in other countries um, have been asked to do things by their government along the same lines. And we may not understand it, uh, the reason why we need to do them uh, day in, day out, uh, for whatever number of weeks that is, and over and over again. Um, and we might not understand that, we might not realize what that is achieving, but um, I suppose the main theme for them is prevention is better than cure as well. Uh, by doing all these things that uh, we've been asked to do, uh, the government are hoping to prevent a lot of problems that maybe would be a little bit too much for our health system and so on. Um, so the gospel story, the relationship between God and man. Um, we know we're mortal. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Everybody wants to live forever and escape. Uh, the Bible tells us how to have a relationship with the Lord and enter into a covenant. And uh, really, if you think about it, the gospel story is all about prevention is better than cure. That uh, we do something about our salvation and our relationship with God before it's too late. Um, so we've now found, if, if you're uh, you know, a part of the Revival Fellowship and you've been baptized and you've received the Holy Spirit and you speak in tongues and you're walking in the Lord, you now found yourself in that situation where we've, you've done what you needed to do, and now we must remain faithful and guarded. We must look after it. And there's a story, uh, uh, Brother Barry Gallagher in Ireland just tell this story about the man who got lost in the forest. Um, and uh, sub-zero sub temperatures. And what he did, once night fell, he knew... There's no point in trying to get out of here anymore. I'm not going to make it out of here tonight. I'm stuck in the forest for the night. So what he did is he found the tree that he could climb. And uh, basically, he climbed up and down the tree all night long. And um, it sounds like a little bit of a funny thing for him to do. But the man had a vision. He understood that if he was to fall asleep, there was every chance that a uh, hypothermia would set in and he would die. Apparently, they reckon when you do... Uh, uh, die of hypothermia, it's a very deep sleep. Every ounce of your body wants to go to sleep, but it's a sleep that you won't wake up from. 
Um, sometimes when we're in the Czech Republic, uh, Jana will point out about maybe neighbours that maybe you've had, unfortunately met that fate where they fell asleep, they might have been drunk or whatever and fell asleep and they didn't wake up hypothermia. So this, this is what this man did is he climbed up and down the tree all night. Sounds like a crazy thing to do, but he knew right well why he was doing it. Prevention better than cure. Well, there wouldn't have been any cure for hypothermia, would there? But, um, and we're going to look at that a little bit tonight that we're, you know, even in the situation that we're in now, um, we're going to end up finding ourselves doing things that we need to do to keep ourselves uh, to keep ourselves right, and that we know if we don't do them, um, yeah, we could end up with more problems than we really want. Uh, the government has put many things in place as well, even for the economy. And sometimes people say, how can they do that? Why can they do that? Really, what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep things the best way they can and damage limitation. So there's been some incredibly generous funds and things that they've put in place for people and employers and companies but they're really trying to prevent i suppose the whole economy collapsing the way of life um just everything and they're doing everything they can because they look ahead and think let's take some action now to prevent maybe disaster in the future so let's look at philippians chapter 3 and verse 1 he says finally my brethren Rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. So he was more or less saying, I'm not going to apologize for maybe talking about the same thing over and over again or, or warning you or, or explaining something to you um, or, yeah, giving you the same advice because for you it is safe, for you to save. And that's what he wanted. The people who'd become spirit filled and who'd entered into that covenant, he really wanted them to keep that position. They were, uh, I suppose, they were set for salvation and he didn't want them to lose their place. And he gives them advice. He said, Beware of dogs. And uh, we know um, that in the Bible, I suppose, sometimes dogs were taught were, were unbelievers. Um, and I've got a story about a uh, it's not really a dog, it's about a dingo. But I think it's called the, the dog fence in Australia. But uh, So what uh, Paul said here is beware of dogs, unbelievers that may undermine people's faith or, yeah, just cause them to go astray. And the dog fence in Australia, it's one of the longest structures in the world. It stretches 5,614 kilometers and uh, its purpose is to keep the dingoes north thus protecting the sheep and cattle down south, I suppose, in the, yeah, New South Wales and uh, South Australia. And there was a story where one station, they, they, they have, I think there's a, there's a department with about 20 people, four people are actively, uh, yeah, they go along this fence looking for holes in the fence and to maintain it and to keep it. But uh, at one point, I don't know the year, but uh, one dingo got in, one dingo got through the fence a dog, and um, he scattered, uh, he killed hundreds of sheep, uh, scattered thousands, um, same with the cattle. Uh, they spent days and days looking for them. A lot of them were, uh, were maimed. Um, the other thing is the, pe the, the sheep that were not killed or maimed, um, the merino wool that you get from those sheep is very, very, uh, I suppose, it's valuable. But when, uh, when, uh, when the sheep are under a lot of stress, it, it affects its growth dramatically. So there was a lot of, lot of loss, I suppose. And eventually they got in an Aboriginal tracker and they found him, this one dog, and they shot him. But this dog, he had, he had wreaked havoc. He really had caused so much trouble. He got in through the fence. There was a hole and then he went and he, he really caused a lot of problems. Um, apparently one, st one station, uh, in Australia alone, lost over 11,000 sheep in one year due to dingo attacks before they completed the fence. That's why they built it in the first place. But that fence was built to keep the sheep safe. And that's why Paul the Apostle is saying here, beware of dogs. He said, beware of evil workers. Um, evil workers are just people who undermine your faith. They attack God's teachings. 
and they, they try to destroy your relationship with him. So it might be very nice people doing that, but the Bible says to beware of them. It says beware of the concision, and to us that might not might be, or may not mean a lot, but at, at the time that was talking about the Jews and the religious people of the day, and we've come from our old religions, and they too can undermine what we've received uh, from the Lord. And the Bible is more or less saying we've got to really protect ourselves. And verse three, he says, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Um, so we've got to look after what we've received. These are, this is the people we are now, and we've got to look after it, and we've got to keep what we have. Um, worship God in the spirit, regular prayer and uh, meetings, coming together, we're coming together in a different way now, fellowship, we're fellowshipping in a different way, we're fasting, we're reading, uh, yeah, worshiping God in the spirit, uh, being happy it's, as well, we need to be happy, we need to rejoice in Christ Jesus, it's a decision, we need to be happy, we've got to rejoice in what we've got and have no confidence in the flesh, don't trust in the flesh, don't lean on the flesh and we need to learn and practice how to do that at times. We've got to keep what we've been given. Let's go over to Philippians chapter 4. This is a well-known um, few verses here. Chapter 4 and verse 4. And this tells these scriptures tell us how to stay strong and how to keep up our guard and to keep what we've had. And the first verse there in verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And always, uh, what does that mean? I suppose the first thing it means is it's not circumstantial. Um, the joy of the Lord, it's our covenant with him. We're blessed. We know him. We have access to him. That's really where the joy will come from. And uh, just to really, zoom, to really focus on those things and uh, don't let our circumstances rob us of the joy of the Lord. And uh, when we look on the things of the Lord, we have more than ample reason to be uh, rejoicing in him. Let your moderation or your testimony, your way of life be made known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. People see that, don't they? They see that uh, God's people are different. Even in these difficult times, uh, God's people are uh, at peace, at peace because of great promises. Uh, be careful for nothing. Uh, worry will drag down our fence. Uh, it'll put holes in the fence. We had a really good testimony there. I think Dennis shared it on WhatsApp during the week from Nick Ashton, and he spoke about uh, the problem with, uh, he, he did get the coronavirus, and praise the Lord, he, he's, the Lord's, he's back, um, and he's overcome it, and he spoke about uh, the whole testimony involved, and he realized the danger with worrying about it too much, and what worry does, how it destroys your immune system, and even in a natural way, and uh, he just trusted the Lord, and he didn't have to worry. Worry will drag down our fence, and the Bible tells us here, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Those channels need to be kept open at this time particularly. So it, does, it just doesn't tell us, well, don't do this, but it tells us then what we need to do. Prevention is better than cure. Uh, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, and this is the result of it, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that's what we're talking about tonight, keeping what we have, uh, keeping it, keeping the fence up, keeping the dingoes out and looking after ourselves. And if we have to climb up and down the tree all night to keep ourselves, we'll do it. Whatever we have to do, we'll do, because we have a vision, we have an understanding that um, we need to keep what we've been given. And there's a great, these verses here are great. And finally, my brethren, in verse 8, uh, he says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, pure, lovely, are of good report. And if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think of these things. And we've got to proactively need to sow good things. We need, particularly at this time, and I really like, now and again, you see little articles. Uh, on the news and maybe on uh, online of uh, five things to be happy about at the minute, five, five good pieces of news or whatever, because it, it can seem all doom and gloom. And we too can look at all the maybe 
the limits. And as Jamie spoke about a few weeks ago, we can look at the restrictions, but the Bible is telling us whatever is good, think on those things. Set your heart on those things and uh, fill your mind with those things. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep your heart with all diligence. And that really means to put a good bit of effort into keeping your heart for out of it are the issues of life. Very important to keep your heart. Um, so life has changed, definitely has changed. For, for And everybody's in the same boat. And we've got to think sometimes even on a practical level, how can we keep ourselves? Uh, always remember that the Lord always makes up what is lacking. Sometimes you might look back in your life at a time where you were lacking in one area or the other, and you sought the Lord, and he always makes it up. I never really have a reason. Sometimes I look back and things that even if I think I'm going to start feeling sorry for myself, that was a tough time. Then I realize, well, you know what? The Lord made up what lacked. And whatever we're lacking and the areas, the gaps and whatever it may be, the Lord will make up those things. We need to remember that at this time. Um, I read this story about the man who lost the ability to walk once. And uh, he was an incredibly positive guy. And he said, I can't remember if it was 9,900, but he said, I don't look on the 100 or 1,000 things I can't do anymore. He said, I look on the 9,000 or 900 things that I can do. So he just said, I've just completely stopped looking at the things I can't do anymore. I'm only looking at the things that I can do. That's very important at this time as well. Um, in the past, we might have said to ourselves, I'd love to have a, a prayer life like Daniel. Three times a day, King David said, evening, morning, and noon, I was going to seek you. Well, some people are in that situation now. Where they can have that. Finally, they've got the time to maybe have that and say, do you know what? I'm going to do what he did. Um, all sorts of things. Uh, I suppose it's up to us to see opportunities in a difficult times. Other areas of our life that can really flourish now. And, that's, and you hear a lot of testimonies and you hear a lot of, Good things that that's what's happening there's good side effects as well to uh, the situation we find ourselves in in Jude 20 a few more scriptures nothing too complicated tonight I think this came out a little while ago but again I think this is the scripture that's been uh, in my head most over the last few weeks in verse 20 of Jude but ye beloved building up yourselves and your most holy faith Praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Maybe we've got to do that. We've got to maybe make more effort than we ever have just to keep ourselves in the love of God. And a little bit proactive, and a, that word prevention, you know, is a proactive word. Building up yourselves in your most holy faith or your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves. Gotta keep yourselves, whatever that means to whatever individual it is. Um, we're all different. We've all got different situations and circumstances, and we've got to work that out. What we've got to do to keep ourselves right in the Lord. Um, speaking in tongues is of God. It's a very, very personal thing. It's incredible. We recommend it to everybody. We tell everybody about the experience in Acts two. And, uh, and sometimes people have all sorts of different beliefs. We're very zealous about that because we know how incredibly effective it is in our lives just to be able to pray in tongues. Um, keep yourselves, it's our responsibility. That word keep there means, is the word terio, to guard from loss or inj injury, uh, by keeping the eye upon, to hold fast, uh, to watch. And again, this is, the responsibility of the reader, whoever reads this, uh, the responsibility lies with them. Um, it's better to mind it than to try and restore it, isn't it? It's better to mind what we have than try to restore it later. And that's what we started off the talk with. It's trying to easier to stop something happening in the first place than to repair the damage after it has happened. Um, we do. Maybe the name of the talk, prevention is better than cure. With the Lord, there is cure. There is a cure. But just tonight, we're just looking at maybe taking a few steps before that. So, and I'm sure many of us have found 
ourselves in a situation where we really needed the Lord to lift us out of a hole or we needed a cure for one way or the other. We're just looking at maybe prevention. Uh, sometimes people have fallen away. They'll tell you it's easier to stay, try and try and overcome than to try and come back later. Uh, it's easier to keep a relationship good than try and resurrect it when it's all falling apart, isn't it? Um, there is a cure, but prevention is probably the better way to go. Um, I read a really interesting one or two more scriptures. Galatians 5, next. Um, really good uh, saying, quote today. Um, and it says, you don't have to be good at something for it to be good for you. You don't have to be good at something for it to be good for you. Um, and in this time, we've got to maybe learn some new skills and do things in new, new ways. We're having meetings in new ways. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, it could be easy for us to say, it's not my thing. I don't like all this technology. Um, we might say, I've heard people tell me before, I don't like speaking on the telephone. Now, it's important now, isn't it? Communication. Uh, I don't like walking and I don't like exercise. I don't like going outside. Uh, the, the government are telling us once a day, okay, fair enough, but they're really telling us it'll do us good. Um, so remember, you don't have to be good at something for it to be good for you. It's very important to do what's good for you at this time, spiritually. And some of uh, sometimes practical things tend to your spiritual life. You know, sometimes just doing good practical things, they tend to your spiritual well-being as well. They really do. Um, I don't like it. Well, sometimes there's, there's a lot of things we haven't liked, particularly when we were young, but they were good for us. They were good for us. I'm sure that man didn't want to climb that tree all night long, but he thought, I need to do this. I need to do this. Um, it's no fun. Uh, the new generation, I suppose, sometimes they don't like doing things if they're not fun. But, um, you know, sometimes... We just got to do things because they're good for us. I know uh, I like my days off, but I remember when, and I think I've mentioned this before, uh, my uncle had to retire early when we went to visit him in, us, or in uh, America. And he said he had to retire at 61. And I said, well, how, how do you like retirement? And he said, uh, Saturdays, is, when every day is a Saturday, it's not fun anymore. And the reason we probably enjoy our Saturdays so much is because we work during the week sometimes. Oh, well, yeah, more than often, don't we? But that's why Saturday is special in itself, because it's our day off, because we work all week. But if every day is a Saturday, you know, that's what he was telling me. It's not that much fun anymore. And um, so, again, we've got to do things that are good for us. Um, okay, Galatians. And I'm sure we can all think about things, and like I said, all our situations are different, so it's different for all of us. At the moment, but we've got to think about things that are good for us. We may not necessarily feel like doing them, but they might be incredibly important at this time. Galatians 5 and verse 16. And uh, this is the ultimate uh, prevention scripture. He says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if we uh, proactively look to walk in the spirit, then he says, you won't have to deal with, you know, you won't, you're not going to fulfill the loss of the flesh. You won't have to deal too much with them problems then. But also in many ways, we'll be avoiding those issues. Um, so if we do this, we can avoid our fence coming down and the dingo causing all sorts of trouble. Um, so much can, can be avoided if we protect ourselves. In verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And some of these fruits happen at different times. I don't, I don't think they all happen at exactly the same time. Um, maybe they can. Maybe if you were, uh, yeah, long-suffering, if you were going through a time where you really had to, the, the fruit of long-suffering was getting a good old run out. Uh, would you still be experiencing joy and peace? Maybe, maybe not. 
But um, maybe sometimes different fruits at different times. And maybe at this time, there'll be different fruits in our lives that are going to get tended to. And there's going to be a bit more focus on them. Not by choice, but it'll be a good thing for, for us in the long run. A few people at work have been telling me some of the advantages that they've been having at home because, yeah, they haven't been going anywhere. Um, yeah, my boss said his knee, he had a lot of trouble with his knee. I might have mentioned this already, but all of a sudden, uh, it's not giving him trouble anymore because he's not in the car that much. Another guy is talking about how much one of his relationships improved at home because he's got more time and he's at home a lot more. So there's a kind of a, a side effects to what's happening as well. The good things, good things happening too. Um, it can be difficult. I know our kids have been trying to keep up their training. It's online. It's not as easy as when you're with the group as much as the meetings are, are similar. But um, maybe they've got to put in a little bit of extra work, but it's, it's easy to give up, but we just try to encourage them. Look, it's good for you to just uh, have a little bit of routine and, yeah, to keep trying. Uh, Proverbs 24. Sure, some people will come out of this and they'll have had five, six, seven weeks off and it'll just do them the world of good. I think I was saying to Jamie today, we'll be working for the rest of our lives, won't we? So, um, yeah, we're going to make the best of uh, everything. Uh, just quoting from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And it talks about all the armor of God and the helmet of salvation and uh, the shield and um, on the battlefield, uh, you would never take your helmet off. You couldn't afford to take your helmet off, even for a while, and just think, I'm going to park it now. And um, we, we can never do that with our salvation either, can we? Even if the circumstances are like now might, you know, they might feel like, well, that's what, we, that's what I feel like doing. I can't go to meetings. I can't do this. I can't do that. But we can never take your helmet off on the battlefield. It's got to stay on. The helmet of salvation. Proverbs 24, verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. Uh, this guy was the opposite to the man in the forest. He couldn't really look far ahead. It sounds like he didn't really look ahead and, yeah, see what was coming. And it says, Lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nipples. Um, had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. The fence was down. That's not good. His fence was down. Um, and this is a story of inaction or no action taken at all. And both of those are probably the same thing, aren't they? And they both have a result. Inaction, just not doing anything or not taking any action at all. And both of those things will have a result. Um, and he says, then I saw and considered it well, and I looked upon it and received instruction. So uh, I think it was Solomon, was it? He's looking it on, and he, he took instruction from what he saw. He said, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little falling of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth. And that word travaileth means it's going to reach its destination. Uh, you can't stop the poverty. It's going to come. And it was mad for the guy to think that nothing will have consequences. That his inaction or his lack of action, to think that that wasn't going to have any consequences of it at all, that that wasn't going to arrive at a particular destination. It was just mad for him to think that. And um, Solomon, looking on, recognized it. And he says, and I want... Uh, thy poverty shall come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Uh, desperation, an armed man, if we don't practice preventive maintenance, even in a spiritual way, uh, drastic and desperate measures will be needed. But again, we look to avoid that. And uh, there's a lot of people naturally, I'm sure that the government are really pleading with to look after themselves at this time. They know that this whole um, 
time that we're going through is going to have an impact on a lot of people, but they're trying to minimize it as much as possible. And they're asking people to look after themselves so that there's, it, the, the impact is just minimal, if at all. And we too in the Lord need to look after ourselves. Uh, we're going to finish in First Peter chapter 1. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no vision, which means revelation or understanding to be able to look ahead, the people perish. That means loosen. But he that keep it or he hedges about or he guards the law, happy is he. So again, it's talking about keep it. He did keep it. The people perish, loosen. Let it, they let go of it. They let it go. They walk their position, their status. They just, they just let it go because they don't have the vision. They don't understand that I need to climb this tree up and down until the, the dawn breaks. Uh, needs to be done until the sun rises. Needs to be done as long as it takes. Um, but where there is no vision, people, they loosen. Just let go, get a bit loose about it all. But he did keep it. And that's that word again, to keep, hedge about it, guard. The law, happy is he. First Peter chapter one, finishing here. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's us. That's us. And that can be anybody, I suppose, who wants to receive the Holy Spirit and uh, who wants to be in this position that the Bible is then talking about them. Uh, they can be, they can repent, be baptized with full immersion, as long as they're at an age of understanding, receive the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, it comes from God. And then this, this scripture starts talking about you, a lively hope. And it tells you how you got it, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. We can't lose sight of this, the future, the vision, as we've read about tonight, the understanding. We know what, why we're doing what we're doing. We're keeping ourselves because of this, this, this inheritance that faded not away, and it's reserved in heaven for you, for us. We're set on that path, and we must keep. And it tells us here how in verse 5, who are kept by the power of God. And uh, we've really got to use a true faith. It's got to be mixed with faith. Of course, faith is the thing that activates the power of God unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And that word kept, again, means to be a watcher in advance, to mount guard, uh, to hem in, to protect, uh, to garrison. And this is very important. Is this element is really, really vital at this time that we keep ourselves on that track uh, unto salvation. It's almost like we're pointed on the direction in the direction of salvation. That's the destination. We're going to reach that as long as we keep what we're being given. That's where we're going to end up. And we have the vision to see that and to understand that. That's where the train is going to stop for us. And um, yeah, praise the Lord. We're going to leave it there. So again. Prevention is better than cure. Uh, let's do the things that are good for us, uh, whether we like them or not, whether they feel a bit foreign to us, whether it's something new for us. We're just going to do what's good for us because we want to keep what we've been given and all the people say.